All right. Welcome back to Waste Some Time with Jason Green. I am Jason Green, bringing you brand new interviews right here on YouTube. You got to hit the subscribe button. It helps the channel. and helps you know when our new interviews come out. And if you think you can ask better questions of the guests than I can, all you have to do is go to the Patreon link in the description, pick the appropriate tier, and you'll be asking the questions of the guests next. You'll also see some of these interviews up to two weeks before anybody else. Today, this is a first for me. We're talking to the band Resistant Bite. We have all five members of the band here. They were punctual. They're ready to talk. I was saying that uh, not to show my age, but when I was younger, you knew the names of every member of a band. Nowadays, you could be multi-platinum and you still don't know the names of the band. So we all know Tommy Skeo from Tesla. He is going to introduce us to the members of his brand new project, Resistant Bite. This is a great band. Their record is available right now. We are going to talk to them right after this. All right, and before I bring Tommy on, I just want to point out that I have done an interview with Tommy and Nathan, their lead singer, which is available right now. I put the link in the description. So if there's any questions that you're wondering, why didn't we talk about Tesla? It is all in that interview. You can see all about it and see about Nathan's other projects uh, when he was with Lynch Mob and Blondes as well. So we're going to really concentrate on Resistant Bites. So I don't want you to think that uh, we missed anything. Okay, let's welcome Tommy Skio. Oh, yeah. Good to see you again, dude. Tommy, I'm glad to have you back. We said when, when you were here last that you'll come back when the record's ready. And here it is. It's available everywhere. And we got to spread the word to people so they know that they can get it. To start, we well, should point out, you can go to resistandbite.com. You find out anything about the band. You can buy physical CDs. You guys have a really cool uh, flash drive thing with, like, shaped like a guitar. You can get the music like that, other merchandise. It's also available wherever music is streamed, uh, anywhere you can find your music. It's there. It's a great record, 13 songs, uh, one instrumental great song called Afterneath, really cool. And I think that people are going to enjoy this. I'm not lying when I say I enjoy every track on this record. You, when you set out to do this kind of thing, you plan on skipping a little bit. Um, I didn't find anything that, that I wanted to skip. Really enjoy it. And I really think we've got to get the word out because fans of hard rock music, I think, will love this record. So we, we get that quick promotion. And now, Tommy, you're going to tell me um, your run with Tesla ended in 2006. You've had a few projects since. Uh, and everyone seems to love this one. As Eddie Trunk says, he, he feels this is your best music since Tesla uh, I, I feel the same. Um, so tell me how Resistant Bite began. Okay, so, so thank you for all that. That, that was, was really nice. Uh, and I agree with you on all that stuff. So this came about, um, I did a record with, with Dave, the drummer. He did a record with me. Called, it was a skin suit record, this record I did. And it was cool. It was a fun record. And that's how me and Dave have kind of known each other. He's known Troy from Tesla and I've, we've known about each other for a while, but he heard some demo of mine. It was like, man, I'd really like to, to get with you on some, some music. So we hooked up, did that record. And then he was saying, man, we should, we should like rock a band. And I was like, yeah, man, you know, and I like, you know, my wife's been telling me since the day I left Tesla the last time that, you know, I should network and I'm just not that kind of guy, you know, and, Band stuff has to kind of happen naturally for me. I can't go out and like, hey, you want to try again? It just, it's got to kind of fall into place. And that's exactly what happened. Dave said, hey, man, I know this guy. We can, we can try some stuff, a good singer, blah, blah, blah. And it just came together effortlessly. And it was just, it, it couldn't, I couldn't have asked for a better set of guys, more talented guys. And Everything you said about the record, man, we just fucking love this record. We, th I think it's probably one of the best records I've ever made. And that's a big statement. I mean, you know, some of those Tesla records are great. But this fucking record, man, I, it's one of my best records I believe I've ever made. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, it's not a dated record in any way. It doesn't sound like you're trying to recapture something you already did. But at the same time, there's something there for fans uh, of Tesla and guitar rock, it, it I think it really delivers what people uh, 
people want. Tell me a little bit about, now you're based out of Florida, but the other guys are in different areas. So tell me a little about that. Yeah. So, so, so when we first got together, you know, we, we would, uh, like when me and Nate first met, we, with the other, me and the other three guys, the other musician guys had already been kind of playing. We had another singer we were dabbling with that wasn't working out. So then we, we hooked up with Nate. When I first met Nate, man, I got in a car with him, met him at his house, drove up to Atlanta, met him at his house and me and him spent four hours in the car driving up to Kentucky or four or five or whatever it is to where the place that we were working at is. And, uh, man, we just kind of, I was playing him CDs and man, we just forged it right there in that ride, man. It was awesome. Got to know him and we're just, it's just such a beautiful thing, man. How it came together like that, you know? Yeah. And you, you and Nathan co-wrote uh, the majority of the songs together on the record. I mean, everyone had some input, but yeah. um, you guys really seem to work, uh, work well together. And so, uh, but he's based out of Georgia. Is that right? Yes. Atlanta. Yep. Yeah. And so, it's an interesting situation. I mean, you guys are all down south, but uh, you're in different states, so you get together to to make this record. The record's produced by Michael Rosen, right? Yeah, man, he did an amazing job too. I'm so glad we got him involved, man. It just it's we couldn't have asked for anything more. Right? It's great. And Michael Rosen, for those who don't know, was also involved with. Well, he produced for Testament and a lot of other bands, but also for Tesla. That. Uh, yeah, your last record the, into the, the now. now record with us. Yeah. Yeah. And so um, very cool. And sonically, you know, this is a good record. I think right now it's easy to make music, but it's not easy to make music that sounds um, as good as these records um, that were produced in these big studios with these great producers. This record has that it doesn't sound dialed in. It doesn't sound um, cheap. And I think that's uh that's a real testament. No pun intended. I like that. I like that. You know, it's definitely a produced record, but it's not like overproduced or nothing mm -hmm. like that. I mean, our first single we put out, Myth, was basically a demo. And you can hear the difference. But even that, man, we we did all that. I mean, Steve did most all the engineering on that, the other guitar player. But it sounds really good. But this thing, yeah, it's not like overproduced, but it's it's definitely got a nice shine on it, man. And it he really was a big help. He, he did a great job. Yeah, now Tommy, uh, so as you said, Steve's your other guitar player in the band. And was the idea always to have two guitars? Now you're known for playing in two guitar bands, obviously. Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, uh, yeah, we you know we didn't even discuss that, to tell you the truth. Me and Dave, we, he just said, man, put a band together. I know this guy, Steve, and I, we just didn't even discuss that. It was just kind of a given, I guess. Now that I think about it, that's kind of how it went down. Although I wouldn't mind trying one day playing in a band with just me playing guitar. I, I wanted to do it in bar seven with Jeff uh, way back then, but he had a guy he wanted to have play with. He likes having two guitar players, but uh, I guess I would have tried it then. But I enjoy it, man. It's good. It takes some of the pressure off of me, and it's nice to have another guy there that really... And Steve's another one of those guys, like I, like when I played off of Frank, it's kind of the same thing. He knows his shit musically, and that's a good thing for me to play off of because I'm kind of a wild card and kind of uh, kind of got one foot in the gutter and one foot in musicality. So it's good for me to play with a guy like that. It really, it really helps me shine, yeah. Yeah, and now you mentioned um, Bar 7 briefly, and so we had a question from one of the Patreon uh a viewers, Kevin Baird Quiver, who he, he says he loved Bar 7, he's a big fan of the band, and he loved the song Cellophane and wanted to know uh, who wrote that song, and I thought I'd ask you. I wrote it with Jeff. Jeff and Jeff wrote the lyrics, and I wrote the music. Yeah, and uh, yeah, so Jeff Keith and Tesla also Bar 7, your project uh, going back. So I wanted to make sure that we got that in. Like I said, today we're going to concentrate on Resistant Bike, though, and I want people to know that. Uh, this band is not uh, shying away from Tesla, and it's not that you said you didn't want to talk about it. It's that we've done it before and that there's yeah. new music to talk about. But the band does play Tesla songs live and gives the fans what they want. You're talking about Steve, and Steve Stokes is here. Let's bring him in first. Okay. Hey, Jason, this might be a good time for me to go get a battery charger because I see that my battery is going to go out. So I'm going to get a charger real quick. You bring okay. him in first. Yeah, I'm going to bring in Steve and, you, and you'll get your uh, charger. Here we go. Okay, Steve, thank you for joining us. Hey, man. Boom. What's going on? Charger, Steve. Hold on. All right, hold on. Let's, uh, so as I was, uh, let's take Tommy out while he gets his charger. Uh, hopefully we can get him back. Oh, I don't know. 
I think we better. Well, maybe we're gonna leave it. <laughs> oh, hold on, I got it. I like his wicker chair. That's kind of cool. All right. Right. Look at that. Look how, look how fast he was. Steve, I don't know if you noticed, but he was all of a sudden get, getting rid of you. Did you hear him? He's like, <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna make a record Dude. by myself. So first of all, I just want to say that if Tommy ever starts a band, another band where he's the only guitar player, then I'm going to be the bass player. And I'm going to play a Dean Flying V bass just That's to piss him bad. off. Man, Steve is my bass player in my in my when the when I put a metal band together, Steve's the man. We're gonna put a metal band together at some point. So, <laughs> Steve, you guys work really well together. Thank um, you, thank the you. Guitar playing blends great on this album, uh, and you can you know everyone could go check out the videos on YouTube so you can see the band performing too. And on the website, there's some live clips so you get an idea. Sometimes when you hear a record with two guitar players, it's hard to tell who's doing what, uh, and this way you can check it out. So Steve, you tell me about how you get involved with Resistant Bite. Oh man, so it all goes back to, to Dave. Everything goes back to Dave. Um, I played with Dave. I mean, we must have played three or 400 shows together <laughs> over the years. We, we toured internationally with the, with the country band and uh, then we kind of stopped doing that because it wasn't our, our wheelhouse really. You know, we wanted to do a rock band. so. He came over to my house for Thanksgiving one year and is like, hey, man, you got to check out this CD. I got this CD that this guy gave me. You're going to you got to check it out. And uh, so he, he put it in the CD player and I don't even have a CD player. I don't know where we listen to it, probably in the car. <laughs> and uh, so I was like, wow, dude, that is really badass. That's exactly what I want to do. Who is that? He's like, it's Tommy Seguillo, man. I'm like, all right, cool. Well, let's. um." let's let's chop this up and, and send it back to him and see what he what he says so i took it and put it in pro tools and uh kind of made like a chorus riff and added a another guitar solo and and it just it just Dude, blossomed from there with it man and it, it came back to me and it blew my fucking mind that was, yeah that's what myth became our first it's amazing he did a great job he wrote the chorus to it and it was like there was the first collaboration like oh man yeah, and we we've been mailing CDs back and forth ever since, and <laughs> ever working since. on working on songs that way. And that you know, to answer one of your questions, that's how that's how it works. You know, we 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 still are able to work on music uh, when we're when we're apart. You know, um, he mails me CDs, and then I mail them back, and there you go. Yeah, we're we're fortunate to have that uh, technology now. Well, people give me shit about. <laughs> because i'm not on pro tools but i'm fine with it whatever works man i got the next album right here this is all tommy right here <laughs> that's uh that's for the, the resistant bite uh box set yeah. and uh, <laughs> and we should point out that last time i interviewed uh tommy and nate uh tommy there a lot of comments were how much tommy smoked and we should point out tommy is two days without smoking two days i feel uh, for you man I'm so, doing it, and I'm really going for it too. So yeah, yeah. So we're 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 rooting for you, and uh, and we're getting to see you without the cloud around you. So not yeah. not a bad no, thing. No, 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 that means we're going to have to get a smoke machine. We have to get a smoke machine now. Um, so I know we got a lot of fans of guitar playing watching. Why don't you guys talk a little bit about what you played? Uh, what kind of gear you're we using to make this record? Uh, well, we like Gibson, so we played a lot of Gibsons. We've got some Jacksons. I am endorsed by AXN now, which is just a fucking killer guitar. I use those and Marshalls, modded Marshalls. And what else is there to say? PV. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I used to have a PV endorsement when I did the, when I did the country stuff. So I hey, got man, the, that amp sounds good. We it, used it. No shame there, man. It so, does. That's what I used. That's what I used on the album through a Marshall cabinet. Um, but yeah, man, Gibson's and for a long time, I was just playing whatever, Tom, whatever I could borrow from Tommy just because he has, <laughs> he has all the good shit, you know, but man, I play almost exclusively a Gibson SG just cause you know, I like the, the look of it. And Angus Young is one of my favorite guitar players. And it's like, you can get all the way up on the neck really easily. And, uh, Tommy introduced me to, to flying V's. I, I'd, I'd never played one. So I got a pro V I actually bought a pro V this year. A little and smaller, it's a little smaller because I'm a little shorter. The big V looks a little, a little insane on me. So, um, but yeah, I, those are those are my two guitars. I also play um, my two main guitars. And I also play a Telecaster for the slide stuff because we play um, we play um, Heaven's Trail in the set, and uh, that's got a good a good open open D tone for that. So, 
Steve's like the perfect foil for me playing. Like I was saying earlier, man, it's, it's good to have him around, man. Yeah. And like I said, you guys work together very well. Let's get David in here because he seems to be the common factor with everybody. So here, <laughs> <laughs> here is uh, David Boy Parks, who is the drummer for resistance. Man, the myth, the mystery. David. He is the myth. <laughs> and, you know, I reached out to David because he was doing a lot of the, in the beginning, the publicity and things before the record was out and uh, set me up with you guys. David, so you, you're, see, the, you're the kind of the, uh, the, the root of it. Tell, tell us a little bit about uh, Resistant Bite from you. Well, for, for me, I would tour with a lot of different artists and I, would, I knew a good musician when I played with them. The, the first night I played with Steven, man, it was a theater in Illinois and I met him on the tour bus the night before and we had a rotation of musicians. And so at that point, my whole thing was whoever slept in that bunk was the next victim. <laughs> and so when he would get on the bus, I was just like, yeah, I don't even need to know your name because you're going to be fired or gone before Thursday. And he got on stage. And as soon as he hit the guitar, I looked at the other guys and I was like, yo, like we're keeping him like that guy's good. And so throughout that same way, I found Brian. And of course I'm a big fan of Tommy, uh, uh, who, who isn't. And as Steven said, we had left uh, the touring situation we were in and wanted to do more of what we wanted to do. And then we get other projects going on. They start falling apart. I did the skin suit record. And all of a sudden one day it just hit me. I was like, why am I not bringing Tommy into this? I need, you talked about two guitars earlier. It was nothing that we've done has ever been planned out or thought out. There is, there is no method to the madness in this band, which it's natural and it's nice to be that way. But in the back of my mind, I was like two guitars, Steven Stokes, Tommy Skeo, <laughs> you know, like I'm Brandon Stimpy. I'm planning to take over the world with these two awesome guitar players. And uh, I thought who were going to get on bass. And I picked Brian because I toured with him before. And uh, like Tommy said, we had a singer that didn't work out very well. And um, I called Perry Richardson one day and wound up with Nathan. Yeah. And now it's, Perry it's Richardson. been really natural and awesome. Yeah. Perry Richardson's from down South also uh, from the band Firehouse originally. And he's yeah. in, He's in Striper now, has been for a while. And so, yeah, and so he made the recommendation um, to bring uh, Nathan in the band. Before we get to Nathan, let's bring Brian in. Brian is the bass player in Resistant Bite. And, and Brian has hey guys. prior commitments, so we're going to make sure we... Cheers. Cheers. Speed down. Cheers. Brian, uh, so now you tell us a little bit about what it was like for you. And were you a, were you a Tesla fan? I mean, were you, from, you know, was that your thing? Uh, yeah, back in the day, I, uh, I, I, I like Tesla. The, I, I got into, I guess, the first, first and second records. Um, but I definitely, what I remember most about Tesla was going to uh, a Motley Crue concert that Tesla was um, playing. And this motherfucker in the opening band was trying to steal the show, banging his head, fucking jumping in circles, and it was Tommy. And I was like, man, that guy is fucking badass. <laughs> and, uh, um, I didn't want to fan fan out at all, um, but the first time that we played uh, Modern Day Cowboy together afterwards, I was like, "Man, if you would have told thirteen year old me that was going to happen, I would not believe it." So that that was pretty much uh, the te my Tesla experience there. But uh, the good one, yeah, yeah, yeah. I uh, I love all music though. I really do. Yeah, I, and uh, and I think that shows in this band. You know, yes, there is the hard rock, but there's a little bit of a punk edge too to uh, uh, some of the music, and and it, and uh, it, it has something for everybody. But it feels consistent. It doesn't feel. I think one of the things that I don't like records when every song sounds different. Some people like that. This record flows together. The 13 songs really seem to go together um, musically, lyrically, and, and, and sonically. Obviously, so so Brian, tell me about making the record because we haven't really talked about that so much yet. I think as, as far as the uh, the continuity of the record, uh, uh, Rosen really played a really uh, integral part of that because we had, I don't know, 40-some songs 
um, for, and then he came in and like, actually <laughs> he found a common thread between them because between all those, they're kind of all over the place, which is what I really love about this band is we have the option to do, um, almost whatever we want really, because everybody's just can get in that zone. Um, and that might come a lot from, I know me, Steve and, and Dave have kind of been through the, the trenches as far as cover bands and having to play all sorts of different styles. Um, so, uh, yeah, it was cool for Rosen to come in and, and give the album a direction, you know. Um, and I had never, like, worked with a, a producer as well put together as Rosen. So, the whole... <laughs> <laughs> so that whole process is really cool. Um, and uh, having having someone that you trust uh, at the helm like that. Yeah, um, he, he stopped a lot of arguments. He did. <laughs> he started yeah, a few, true. too. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, that's true. <laughs> I think people don't realize what a producer does, especially if you're not uh, in a band. Uh, yes, there's a lot of refereeing, and sometimes it's nice to have someone be that sort of final say or outside say because yeah, right. Uh, right. That's the hours you spend, yeah, it's, it's so passionate to you. And sometimes you'll look back and go, I can't believe I was fighting over that, you know. Uh, so it's good yeah. to have that on the <laughs> <laughs> No one says anything. <laughs> that's, where silence, that's where the silence comes in. Everyone's got their own. Yeah, yeah right. Fucked on a couple of points, I guess. Oh, there you go. Michael's no, Mike awesome. Was great. He was working great. with Michael was great. Yeah, he's done. But I it. want to make sure we get Nathan in. So Nathan is the last one to join. As you guys all mentioned, you you had a different singer for a little while, didn't work out. Perry Richardson recommends Nathan, so he's joining us live from the road. Here he is, Nathan Oots. How are you, Nathan? Boom. I Oh, yes, I was actually the last one to join, even in the band, not in just the interview. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's why we saved you for yeah. last, Nathan. Uh, and, and everything they said is not true. There's not a lick of it that's true. <laughs> it's Nathan, true. You, you, uh, you were in a band called Blondes. There's an album out. Uh, I, what year is that, 90? 90, yeah. Yeah. And uh, so it's one of those hard rock records that maybe some people missed. And then also you were singing for Lynch Mob for a while with, with George Lynch. And so, uh, and probably right before Resistant Bite, you were doing that. So uh, Nathan, were some of these songs done already and then you changed the words or, or these are all fresh ideas? Yeah, some of them were done already. Dave sent me like this compilation of uh, songs and uh, just like snippets of them, not the whole entire song. And uh, he he made a really good presentation of the music that they had. You know, it was like blending out of one into another. And um, yeah, it was like there was like I don't know, Dave. There was like two or three that were on there, right? That were yeah. That you were, know, and <clears throat> here's a good tidbit: uh, is the myth I'm living was a song that we had already started. I started writing, and then we had tracked the music that you hear now on that song to other lyrics and other cadences of a chorus and a verse. And we stripped all that away. And I, and I told Nathan, I said, I want you to redo everything. Like, I don't want, I don't want you to hear the other version. I don't want you to hear, I want you to do. So he put lyrics to a track that was already done. So when yeah, you have like a little push or a little hit or a little guitar riff, it was going with the lyric that's not there anymore, but somehow it just came together. And it was just, I hate to use the term, but it, very magical. It fell together so, it just it fell together so great. Yeah, I mean, I, I actually prefer that. Like even Tommy's sending me stuff. I've got stuff too. I got like CDs and CDs and CDs of Tommy's ideas. <laughs> and I you know, try to get something as big possible for me is easier to write to and to today's point yeah I, I after like he sent me a couple of them then it became like the thing like don't send me what that guy did let me try to do you know what i can do to it so some of the stuff was like pretty much the song was done and i don't know i mean i write the way i write and it just falls into place where you know because if you listen to something over and over again in a solid pattern you identify with where the pre-chorus is, where the solo is, so on. So, so it's easier to go, okay, I've got this amount of time to put something here. And then it just falls into a format. So for me, it's easier to write that way. 
Um, we do have a bunch of stuff that we got to a point where it was like, okay, stop. Now, what are we going to do here? Are we going to extend this right here? Are we going to make it shorter? How are we going to do it? But I, I prefer that. I actually prefer a, a, a canvas that's already been made, and then I can paint on it. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah Tommy Tommy will actually send us like a 17-minute song. <laughs> and because he has – I always say he has layers. He has like so many different parts, and we pretty much decipher – okay, this is a chorus or this is a verse. We'll cut this right. down. And some of these songs could be eight to 10 minutes long if we allowed them to, but we could have made the bombs was like that. Dead well, record, yeah. I was just listening to some of the uh, older demos. Cause I'm going to hang out with Steve after we rehearse next weekend. And I I'm picking through some of the other CDs, man. And there's this one I was listening to. It's about seven minutes long, but man, I forgot about it. It's a fucking badass song. I want to turn it on to you guys. You guys have probably heard it, but somehow I got lost in the in the in the mix. But that's Bombs is I, one of those songs. I it, happened it's... like I happened like that, and uh, I happened because it was in Steve's catalog, and it got overlooked for some reason or another. It didn't get heard, and then I was going through them in my car, and I was like, "Whoa, hold on, wait a minute, where did that one come from?" There's a yeah. lot of them. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that the good thing is. What well, one you guys get along so far, <laughs> and, <laughs> and uh, hey, give us time, yeah. And uh, well, we're, we're, this is sort of like therapy right now, you know, we're all in a safe place, but uh, well, luckily, there's more music because I do think this record leaves people wanting more record. I know this is brand new, we got to get this out first. But Nathan, tell me lyrically, were some of these ideas things that you had already had, or was everything fresh for this record? Every bit of this was brand new. It was a brand new feeling, brand new inspiration. Um, like I said in a prior interview, um, I was kind of in a writing slump for about better part of a, I don't know, half a decade. It seemed like I, I, I was at home. I just couldn't really do anything. I had been doing nothing but like just kind of basically glamorized cover music. And I really wasn't being creative and I was trying to be. And for some reason or another, it just wasn't sticking. Um, because I'm, I'm also somewhat limited on guitar. You know, I play guitar, um, but I'm, a, I'm not a great guitar player. So I, I had my, my wiggle room and writing is kind of narrowed down. And eventually you just kind of fizzle out on it. And I was being very non-creative. I didn't have anything going on. And when I met Tommy, not only was I inspired by that alone, you know, like everybody else in this interview knows that it's, you know, when you're around someone like that, that's made that kind of achievement, it really boosts your, you know, your self wealth, you know, in the situation. So that helps a lot. And then when he started playing the stuff for me in the car, that four hour trip he was talking about, it was like, you know, the term, the floodgate, just like my brain just opened up and said, Hey, I'm back, you know, and so everything <laughs> is new, um, based a lot of it's based on old experience. You know, obviously you write about things that have happened in your life or that, that you've heard have happened to someone else. You write about things that may inspire other people to do what they want to do in life. And you kind of maybe just kind of, you know, kind of common ground it, you know, kind of uh, make it a home type thing that people understand and associate with. But um, all brand new. Uh, every yeah, bit of yeah. it. And Except for the last song that I had until I was like 20 some years old that I actually wrote in Perry Richardson's house. As strange as that is. Irony. Yeah. L lyrics are a tough thing. I think, especially now not to sound dated, you know, uh, you still got guys writing songs about girls and cars and uh, maybe <laughs> it works for them. But I think for this project, you had to be a little, you had to be a little deeper. And I think it, I think it shows. That's so funny you said that because that is my very description when someone says, you know, the writing, I'm like, I don't want to write about girls and cars anymore, but not in the fashion of love, in the fashion of girls, you know what I mean? A, a love experience or a relationship, there's some songs on this album that do involve very clearly relationships and so on and so forth, but yeah, girls and cars. I'm trying yeah. to get away. Nate does a fucking awesome job on lyrics, man. He definitely brings it. Yeah. You know, none of us are spring chickens. We're not going to write about right dances and, and emotion. We're going to write about, you know, 
Right. Not that there's anything yeah. wrong with that, you know, but I, Oh yeah. Yeah. That's Dave's point. The older you get, I think you become a little wiser. I think you become more, a little more it, educated. It's more, more mature. Yeah. It's just, you know, a little more educated, a little more thought process involved into it. So. Yeah, for sure. So this is the first time we've had a full band on. So I want to go around and That's have all. you guys. Yeah. And it's so far so good. Who, who could, I <laughs> thought we'd have technical problems, but we're, we're doing good. Let's knock on some wood. But uh, I want to go around and have you guys each talk about one song from the record. So this will give you a second to think about that song. And maybe a song that stands out to you. It doesn't necessarily have to be a favorite. I know songs are like children. It's hard to uh, it's hard to pick one. But uh, it will go around and just tell me a little bit about the song, maybe what it meant to you, and the recording of it. And, you know, uh, and Nathan, we'll start with you. Wow. Um, for me, <laughs> that's, yeah, that's a crazy question. Um, but I think if I had to bring anything to light, I think it would be in honor of the military, the song Arms. Um, I, I actually spent more time on that song lyrically than any other song on the record. Um, I felt uh, compelled to recognize the, the military, the service, anybody that you know puts themselves or puts their country before themselves, or even you know people that do you know, EMTs and doctors and so forth, police, everybody that, that is, sees something greater than themselves. I, I thought it was important that Bombs was out there. We actually, that song was a little longer than it is on the record. And Tommy actually went to my defense about, and I really wasn't arguing with Mike Rosen about chopping some of the fat off of it. But Tommy was like, listen, there's some important things being said that you're taking out of this song. And we eventually got to the point where we got it where we wanted it. But, you know, Retired Colonel Dwayne Boyer, you know, um, Lieutenant uh, Lance Collins. These are people that I know that I actually went to school with Dwayne. I was in a band with Lance and I saw all these guys that these were, I played little league football with this guy, you know what I mean? And, and I see him giving his, devoted his entire life to that cause, you know, and they did, they're out there, they were in the bodies and the blood. They saw the, the craziness, things on fire, everything around them burning and destruction. And they came home and they continued to live their life with their families and their children. And they they walked through that fire. And that's just unbelievable that people do that. And uh, I just really wanted to recognize that. So Bombs, to me, it's, a, it's an emotional tune for me, for sure. I, I'm very, very happy about that song that that's put on the record. Yeah, he heavy song. Definitely not uh, Girls in Cars. Uh, and I think people would go. <laughs> Brian, yeah, like bombs. Brian, you tell us about one. Um, man, uh, already said is a song that I didn't realize as it was happening and as, as it was being recorded, how good of a song it really is. Um, it wasn't until I, you know, we, we had the, uh, the record rough tracks and stuff and I was listening to it and actually finally heard the words to it. And I was just blown away at how mature and on the spot and just how, how great lyrically that song is it's I, I think it's the most mature song lyrically on the record as far as the songwriting goes um i i, I love it i love what they did on that rec on that song um as far as as far as like uh are were those your words tommy uh, me or, and nate me and nate. Oh, okay yeah. okay so both of you guys yeah i, I nate thought and I, nate. See, nate I don't and know I, anything that proper <laughs> Yeah, I wrote yeah. the verse. I wrote the verses. Top wrote the chorus. Okay, yeah, yeah. I love that song lyrically. It just, it's it nails it. Um, as far as like the recording of stuff goes, it was like such a man. I have no idea. Like it all kind of is one big long thing for me. I have troubles like <laughs> uh, pinpointing out like certain things that just happened because um, it was just such a. It was long days over a long period of time, and it all just was one huge thing you know in its own um, <laughs> i uh yeah i forget the details of a lot of it but uh um yeah i don't know i, th I think home maybe as we were recording that one i remember that a lot because it's one of the more uh i guess organic uh as far as the recording process went ones on the record um so i do remember that going down really smoothly and like more as a band like really on that song so I, I do remember the process on that one pretty well. Yeah. Okay. And David? It's 
this is an impossible question. You know that, right? Because right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I still choose mine. The certain songs that just remind me, you know, when when Tommy and Steve are slamming guitars on some parts that I just that they're they're really highlights for me of why I love them so much. But I, I'm gonna say over the the course of the, the two years that we were getting together and demoing songs and you know just getting in the rut some of the songs kind of become monotonous for a while because you know some of these songs are like three years old to us right now but at the very end like nathan said he goes guys there's a song called i and we it's going to be on the record we have to be we have to put it on there and i was like okay whatever nate you know it has to be on there and then i heard it and i'm like Yo, that has to be on there. <laughs> and, <laughs> and, and, then, and then the recording process, you know, we're working with Rosen. He's looking at me going, do this, do that. He wants us to be us, but he's also kind of guiding us. And I'm always coming from a John Bonham, keep it simple, stupid drum fill, make it big. I play a 26 inch kick drum, make your fills, blick them, blick them, air drum the record, don't overthink it. Tommy's over there pushing me going, Hey man, do some crazy Terry Bozio shit. You know, like I want to hear you go crazy. And between that on one of the takes, one of them, uh, after this, I think the solo section, I do this triplet thing that goes down the toms to my kick drum. And I remember looking through the glass and Rosen almost came out of his chair. And there was a couple times like on home and other things, when I play in the studio, I, what I'm doing is I'm auditioning parts the first two or three takes thinking, what do I really want to do here? I'm auditioning parts. And a couple times he went, yeah, that's a take. And I was like, no, I overplayed there or I didn't play enough or whatever. And that take, he said, yo, that's it. He, he, he's as in Michael Rosen form, David, that was fucking rad. We're keeping that. Yeah. And and that yeah. still came out of freaking nowhere. I didn't plan it. I wasn't thinking about it. It just, it was very natural. And every time I come across the part on the record, I remember I can still visually see Michael Rosen pushing himself back from the board. And yeah, and it's just that highlight for me, you know. But the whole song, you know, you can put it in at any point of the day and it just... It changes yeah, great. your attitude, your course of your day. Great, great track. And uh, yeah, to get a reaction from an engineer or a producer who does this every day is always a good thing. Yeah, well, because when you're playing and, and you seem like jump back, you're like, okay, I fucked up or I did really well. I don't know which one it was. I, I enjoy that track. When you look at the track listing and you see a song called I, just the letter I, it obviously stands out. And I go, boy, oh, I hope this song is good, uh, you know, because it's, it does stand up, and, uh, uh, it, and it lives up to it. It's it, uh, a great track. So, okay, Steve, the the impossible question now comes to you, man. Before I answer it, I just want to just quickly elaborate on what Brian said about home, and that song is the only uh, song, well, besides "Say What You Want," that we recorded as a band all together, no overdubs for the main track, not even the guitar solos, not even the vocals. I think we only overdubbed an acoustic guitar and a, a and, uh, it's a background. And Home is the one I wish I would have did something different. <laughs> yeah, but it just, it just came together that way. It came together that way. But my favorite song on the record is definitely, without a doubt, Blood. Um, That's my favorite, yeah. It, um, it kind of has everything that I like as far as hard rock and metal goes. Um, it starts off with this like you know really cool intro which i like which actually tommy and i recorded that intro at my house um for the demo that was the intro for the demo brian overdubbed the bass to you know because either tommy or i played bass on the intro so and then we we put that at the beginning and uh and then i it has a drum solo in it which i love i'm you know i'm i'm a drum fan i'll admit and uh, also, I really, really, I love the verses of it because it has a kind of a, it kind of has like a 90s kind of metal kind of thing going on. And then when it gets to the solo section, it all of a sudden turns into Judas Priest crossed with Swedish metal, which are my favorite <laughs> kinds of metal. And 
Then Tommy and I, Tommy does the first half of the solo, and then he and I do this this little uh, harmonized guitar solo, which was Mike Rosen's idea actually in the studio. We just well, you had been it. mentioning that for days and days before he mentioned it, so there was something about that. that I we, mentioned it, but Mike he never heard up, me like, mention oh, it. We're doing and a. Yeah. I was pushing for it two years ago, and nobody listens to me. I didn't want to do it because it was a little too, it was it was a little too complicated for me to want to figure out, but uh, I figured it out. <laughs> Listen, it, it, it's great, and it uh, it you know it ha and it also has a little bit of that Tesla vibe too that fans might like. Uh, yeah, blood uh, blood on me is the first uh, track on the record. That's the kickoff track, dude. And Nathan's vocals on that are just out of this world. Yeah. I mean, they just everything about that song just is my. It has all of my favorite genres of music in it, so. That's why that's my oddly favorite. Enough, oddly enough, one of the heaviest tunes on the record is about the crucifixion of Christ. That's really what that song's about. So Ooh. it's kind of crazy. Everybody's like, it's metal. It's like, yeah, it is, but pay attention to what I'm talking about. It's pretty cool. <laughs> Listen, there couldn't be a more heavy topic, right? Right. And it starts with the record. It's great. And Rosen was the one that actually told us that. He's like, record's got to start with blood. And and he also didn't tell you, he, he uh, recorded the ocean when he was in Wrightsville one time and had the ocean waves crashing yeah. up on the shore. But there's a little bit of that in the beginning of that song too. Freaking so cool. And they're like, what does that sound? What does that sound? It's like it's the ocean. That's like anything you want to see bigger than you on this planet. Just go stand on the foot of the beach. Yeah. I, I wanted that in there because it was, it was, it was very, it was very peaceful, but devastating at the same time because the waves were huge. So but it was just, I don't know. I just thought it would go perfect. Yeah, in there. it stands out. I, I noticed it right away. Um, but yes, definitely, uh, definitely great track. Okay, Tommy. Now you got the hard part because they've already went through four of them. Well, you tell me you what know, it stands I've just out. Been sit I've just been sitting here listening to what everyone says, and it's like, uh, man, I love this band, man. The way things happen so naturally, and everything everyone's saying. I mean, like, like I, I was, I came out. I was the song that wasn't even going to go on the record. I don't know what we had. We had other songs that it, that would have made it, but um, Nate really pushed for this, and that was a song that Steve pretty much fully wrote. And so it was like it, that that little kind of thing is just really cool how that happened and stuff like like on um, Blood, like Steve's talking about, you know. When, when Nate sings about Jesus or God or something, man, he, you think he's singing about Satan, but man, that's when his voice fucking just gets rad. I mean, it gets fucked up. And that kind of shit I just love. But as far as a song, man, I, I would say something. I think Fate was a, was a, a real favorite of mine. Um, just because it just, I don't know, when I wrote that and the leads kind of going in and out of it and the way Nate came at it, um, I just love it, you know. And I love these guys, man. I haven't seen these guys since the last show, and it's just good to see everybody. It is good to see everybody. It's awesome. <laughs> yeah. It so, um, one of the things, Tommy, that stands out to me about you guys is that this doesn't seem like just another project from the guy from Tesla. And sometimes people who are known for a band, they experiment with different things, as you did. But this really is a band, and that's what we're selling. Uh, this is original music, and you guys obviously get along well. and Okay, so the record comes out during a pandemic. So our goal now is to get people to listen to this music. You know, there's not as many shows. Everybody's, you know, uh, it, it took a minute to get this out, to find distribution. Luckily, it is available everywhere, resistantbite.com. You can get physical copies. You can get merchandise. You can also find it anywhere the music is streamed. There's no excuse. I never sell anything on this show that I don't like. I'm a Tesla fan. I saw the band tons of times. Uh, and when it comes together, you realize that this is a band and this is new music that you can get into. That's not an easy thing to do in this day and age, but it is an easy thing to get the music. Go wherever, go to Spotify, download it, whatever you got to do, but get the music because this is a band that you will you listen to the record more than once. It's not a one time listen. And then this is a band that you're going to want to see live. I want to point out on October 31st, Halloween of this year. You guys are playing in Georgia, Woodstock, Georgia. Not the Woodstock, a Woodstock. Right. Uh, you guys will be performing. Eddie Trunk is hosting it. And this is the uh, this is the record release party. This is the first public uh, 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 listening of, of this music live, especially. I know you guys have played a few shows, 
but this is the first time since the record has been out. So tell me a little bit about uh, the live show. Whoever wants to jump in. Uh, the, the live show is a lot of fun, man. And this, this show coming up on the 31st, we're going to play every fucking song on the record, which is a real kick in the pants. And uh, I'm looking forward to it. In the pants. It's a real kick, kick in the, the pants, pants, son. <laughs> yeah, the, and this place, too, is like, it's not a massive building. This is uh, Mad Life. It's a place that I play around in. Um, see, about 200 people. Um, so it's going to be this kind of personal approach to this thing. And whoever gets in is going to really have an up close, personal, um, you know, view of this situation. It's got a great freaking sound system. The house guys there are freaking phenomenal. Um, great light show in there. It's very comfortable, very inviting place to sit and watch music. It was built to record live music. They actually will be recording the show as it's being played. And there's like six different camera angles that's stationary there. So you can walk out of that building with like a complete package of what that evening was about. And just not, and just the band itself is a pretty powerful band, but we got Nate yeah. like kind of leading the charge. And man, Nate's a fucking freak in nature, man. It, it, when you see him live and the way he kind of, kind of ringmasters the whole thing, man. It's a real entertaining thing. He fucking kicks ass, man. We all do. This is yeah, a, we all this do, but Nate's Nate's the ringmaster, man. It's 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 uh, it's it's fun for me to watch when I'm up there playing with him and just it, it's great, man. It's a great vibe. It's a lot of fun, man. We got just that to me, I, I tell you honestly what I'm excited about is I know the I know the bottom end in this building and free I'm gonna I can't Wait till pal freaking turns his rig on. It's going to be like, oh, you're going to feel the floor just start vibrating. And just the, the sound, Every the rigs are close, so everybody got to really get a good sound. Dave's got a really nice setup where he's at. We're going like, to move, we're gonna move some fucking air, son. Yeah, oh, we're going to move some air, man. It's going to be awesome. You know, it really is. So It's exciting, I think, for fans as well as myself and everyone else to be part of this band, to watch it take off. This is an organic thing, and it's new music. And I think that as people hear it, you guys will start to do more shows and maybe get on some packages and, uh, you know, some of the cruises and things. Obviously, sure, yeah. some people will come out because they want to see the guy who was in Tesla. Great. But when they hear this original music, I think people are going to love it. And it's exciting to get to watch this band grow. And, and we already are because first you guys put out a single on YouTube and people liked it. And it had a really strong response. You put out the second song on YouTube. You got a music video for it. And again, a strong response. The, the, the internet is full of haters. People are looking to squash people. Yet people like the music so much that the, the response is overwhelmingly positive, which is such a, a great thing. And awesome. you guys did this right. So Tommy <laughs> talked about his departure from Tesla and all these things. He did it. Now we're able to come and talk about a new band and new music that doesn't shy away from the past, but does deliver a, a great record. And I know it must be exciting for all of you. I feel like this is something that will last. I don't want to jinx you guys, but uh, I feel like this is something that we're just seeing the, the beginning of not someone who's, uh, hawking a product. I, I don't think, I think everyone in this band is thinking this is the band. I mean, I've heard Nate say many times, this is his swan song band. And, and as it is mine too, I'm not <clears throat> thinking of going anywhere else or doing anything else. And, uh, hopefully, hopefully everyone else feels the same way I, from the way everyone talks. I, I think that is the case. Yeah. It's like, like Dave had said, you know, it's just when, you know, natural thing, it's like even, you know, the, the one thing that got LOR Live Records that, you know, saved uh, Steve Smith, he said, you know, when things fall in smooth and everything just happens and the door just open, it was meant to be. And for this band, literally, there's been like nothing. On a time when people were afraid to even go outside, I don't think if it wasn't for something bad happening on this planet that we'd even pulled this record off. We, because everybody, you know, Brian plays constantly. Dave plays constantly. Steve does too, you know. And so, for that to shut down gave us that opportunity to go in that studio and make that record in 20 days. Now we didn't go in there unprepared. We had been very well prepared to go in. We were basically just picking and choosing what we were gonna do. But we pounded that record out in 20. And but it was 20 days straight. No weekends. None of that. Yeah. No there day was, off. Interference. There was literally no interference. Yeah, we, 
You we lived in, in that studio. I mean, yeah, and here, you're talking about Nashville, and it was pretty quiet, you know. So we we were very fortunate, and everything fell into place the way it did. So this good. pandemic, it's strange how some good things uh, came out of people having the time because right. maybe we could have done these things. Like you said, when you're working uh, as a musician, you're playing gigs, it's very hard to focus on a, a new original project. You know, obviously no one's getting rich. This is brand new. And so uh, that, that this situation opened up that time for you guys to put out some great music. Right. Now we're at that. Now we're at the point now where everything that point is done. Now we are on that struggle bus quote unquote that everybody else is on you know our label is starting to work on putting the puzzle pieces together to get us out there to get us in shows and on festivals and you know everything that goes into putting a band out there so with lor live that's helping with us doing our self-promoting that's helping but you know everybody's doing it i mean if you look at if you go on the social media you're at the biggest of the big these guys are like they're in your grill every single day but you gotta be you know, yes. falling into place like it used to. But it'll come. I, I really have no doubt about that because you're looking at five guys right now that are not gonna quit, dude. We we're hammering down done and we got a long time before it's done. I mean we've got and that's the that's the plan is to go out and push this thing, get on our tour, whatever we can to get out there and get people to see it and to know about it. That's the plan. And Brian's hair is fabulous. That alone Yes, get- it is. <laughs> for me, my COVID band, you know, like my COVID all of us, too. all of us have toured. All of us have toured for major acts and and you know whatever to make a dollar to pay rent, to do whatever. Like you said, this is brand new. We're not getting rich yet, and um, it's. I know for Stokes and I, being on tour together and being playing arenas in front of twenty, thirty thousand people every night. And then walking off stage and just being fucking miserable, mm-hmm. just hated life. And w- this is what this is cu- culminated of because we want to be in this band. And it's nice to be in a band that you're a fan of. When you look over at, at Tommy and he comes up with a guitar lick and you're like, oh my gosh, that, like that, that was so inspiring. And then Steve comes in and compliments him or comes up with something. You're like, holy crap, where'd that come from? And then Brian comes in with a, a, a bass lick or something and, and it makes me want to do something different and then nathan puts his lyrics on it and everybody's inspiring in the, the other person and it's very natural we love doing this whether it floats or sinks mm-hmm. and that is the difference between it being a business and being a band yeah they know self be true you got to do it because i you believe it am, yeah i'm damn excited about every bit of it yeah, it's uh, you know, if my experience in in traveling with bands and management, uh, uh, some bands are more difficult than others. Rat, and uh, I'm looking at you guys, and I'm trying to figure <laughs> out who is the difficult one. But I'm I, I got, and I'm good at profiling. Uh, I've been profiling musicians for quite some time. Calm down, so. Brian. <laughs> there isn't really. There isn't. This band, it's funny. We are we are like, you know, I'd said the thing me and Tommy talked about before, the cliche. It's like, I feel I've known him all my life. But in, in all honesty, we have. Believe me, dude, we've argued. We've fought. There's been some yelling, this, that, and the other. But you turn around 10 minutes later and go, dude, that was really silly, blah, blah, blah. And we go on about our business. Or someone says something hard like, that makes everybody laugh and go, yeah, that was a little silly. I mean, we're brothers. We we can't. Yeah, I think we're a family that you can't. Like I say, you can't pick your family. I don't think you could replace any one individual in this in this situation, and it pan out to what it is right now. So, you know, I'm stuck think, with them. They're stuck like, with like me. Like I said earlier, we're all experienced, <laughs> and we're all mature enough that what the best thing we have going for us is now we know how to do this. Yeah, we, we're, we're not all teenagers a, coming out of a garage. Yeah, we've done this before. Guys, I'm glad every aspect, personal, everything. Yeah, Yeah. I'm really glad you were able to join me. I'm glad we got to do this. I think it's exciting that people get to see the faces behind the music, and uh, and now we got to get people to listen to this record. Uh, This interview. Thank you. Yeah. Resist and bite. Resist and bite. W. Resistandbite.com, and it's and not the thing. It's a a and b. Resistandbite.com. Any social. 
Yeah, any digital outlet, anything that you can get it on, we got it available. LOR Live Records, people, rock and roll forever. Yes, all these links. Now I got my batteries low. I got Tommy's problem. Uh, hold on. That's what I was just doing. I had to. I had to plug my phone in. Now I'm the difficult I, one. I totally usually have it charged, and I forgot. I I did this before the interview, boys. Yes. Yeah, got ahead. Mine came unplugged uh, with the excitement of the interview. But, Mine uh, runs on beer. <laughs> uh, resistantbite.com. All the links are in the description, so it's very easy spelled out yep. for you. Just go down to the description, pick up a physical copy, listen to the online music, watch the videos, and then get ready to see the band October 31st, record release party in Georgia. And I know there's a lot more. You know, things are just starting next year. 2022 hopefully will be uh, the big year for Resistant Bite. So everyone will check that out. Thank you, guys. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you, Jay. See you guys later. All right, thanks for having us.